when I looked at these images coming through, I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I don't have a clue right now what this guy has. The sore just started getting worse and worse and worse. He felt like he was encased in armor. As a diagnostician of dermatology, I specialize in decoding the mysteries of rare and complex skin conditions. A skin finding may actually be the sign of internal pathology. I'm here to reveal it as your SkinTel agent. Jonathan came in as another consult on a Friday afternoon. Profoundly impactful to walk into that room and see the wounds this, you know, present on his head, on his trunk. I mean, his chest wall was literally as hard as a rock. And it too was starting to have ulceration. I thought it was just dry skin on my scalp. It started on my scalp towards the dome of my head. It turned into a sore and it manifested itself into an ulcer and the ulcer just started just growing and growing it it just didn't seem to get any better yeah you've got really nice mobile skin over here and then as we move centrally you are just not improving from the fibrotic standpoint here because we had pathology there that was clearly very inflamed areas that were hard as a rock but not yet ulcerated I knew that that's where we had our window to get tissue, where we could then definitively render a diagnosis. I just became aware of this new ulcer this morning. I had prior hospital visits that I ended up walking out of the hospital with no answers. They, they couldn't figure out what was going on. Had all these tests done and they came up empty handed. So I ran into your terrific team. <laughs> It was really a God's blessing. My suspicion was a condition called calciphylaxis, um, and another condition that is that causes occlusion of blood vessels called cryoglobulinemia. Both very rare, um, exceedingly rare to arise in, in patients, the calciphylaxis without underlying renal failure, and he didn't have renal failure, but he had such a calcific or hardening of his skin, I thought there has to be calcium in here, and we wanted to go find it. I found myself feeling as though I was starting to fail. And that didn't sit well with me. I needed some help. I needed, I needed um, someone that, that, that could, you know, figure out what was going on with me. What was, what was the problem? Jonathan was put through a surgical procedure, a surgical biopsy, and we did indeed identify there was calciphylaxis or calcification of the skin structure. We always like to put patients into a box. We like you to have one diagnosis that can kind of explain everything going on. And the challenge with Jonathan is that that was just not the case. So Jonathan had two diagnoses that were both contributing to the same ultimate pathology. One condition called cryoglobulinemia causes increased viscosity and slower flow of the blood. And the other condition actually, called calciphylaxis, narrows the blood vessels, makes them less elastic because of calcium deposition. And at the same time, is depositing calcium in his skin, encasing him in what feels like a sheath of armor. So, um excited to learn that uh, Jonathan's sodium thiosulfate will start next week, his infusion. He had his pick line placed, which is a line that allows him to have ease of access for the infusion that'll have to be three times a week. Also, I spoke to him last night and um, we had started him on another couple medications to try to sort of dissolve out that firmness of calcium um, that's embedded in his skin that's creating almost like an armor encasement. And he thinks that actually uh, the medications that he's been on them about a month are already starting to work. Wow. I'm not kidding you. You look better than you did four days ago in the office. Hmm. I mean, the yes. tissue mobility. The, the healing is progressing very rapidly. I mean, the flexibility of your tissue is actually, you know, it moves. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we've got firmness still in here, but in, in here, but it's it's softening. I mean, we get movement of it. Jonathan um, subsequently was administered infusion medication to treat both his rheumatoid arthritis and to reduce the amount of cryoglobulins his body was producing. And as well, uh, we have him on, on an infusion therapy to try to sort of bind up and get rid of the calcium that was otherwise causing the hardening in his skin. Uh, both treatments have really changed the trajectory of his disease significantly. Those are the results. Pretty excellent, huh? Yes, yes. Nice. Very they look nice. good. They look yes. Great. I'm doing well. Um, the medication that you've placed me on is, um, um, it's, it's, it seems to have, it's doing its job. It's, um, it's a slow process, but it's slowly, I'm slowly getting a lot better. I did my best. You know, I'm, I'm always one of those individuals, I always look forward, don't look back, it is what it is, and uh, you have to, you know, go through life and make the best of things. I always like to think that we're taking care of a disease state, but we don't forget the person, you know, that that's really what we have to take care of. And uh, Jonathan also suffered uh, the loss of his father unexpectedly a few months ago after he was discharged from the hospital. Um, he's now moved in with his mother to help take care of her. It's always hard to lose someone you love. And yes, it's it, it's never it's never easy, not for anyone. No. Um, so it's it's something that you know, it happens in life. It'll happen to all of us. That uh, you know, someday, the good Lord's going to call you home, could call you home. So um, you know, you just got to keep the faith and go on with life. And hope it's a long ways from now. Yes, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, yes. You know, as physicians, you know, we tend to really think about our mentors as those professionals in medicine that drove us to towards our passion um, in, you know, a particular subspecialty or the disease states we focus on and the patients we manage. And, um, you know, all too often I've also found that as impactful as my physician mentors have been, and I can't underestimate how impactful they've been in my life, um, I also at unexpected moments find myself being mentored by my patients, inspired by their strength, inspired by their, you know, resolute nature of getting through very difficult times. Um, and, you know, I, I consider them my mentors too. And this is the part I love. I was quite surprised to see the patient. He walked in under his own steam, dressed <laughs> up in normal, ordinary clothing and looking rather healthy and normal, but nothing on first glance overtly reveals any other of the troubles that we have been dealing with for so long. I'm doing what I need to do to get better. Yeah. That's the main thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Little discomfort's no big deal. You know, took so care of that. So celebrate the wins, you know? Yes, yes, absolutely. The, uh, you have to, uh, you have to celebrate the wins. It's, you know, there's enough going on in this life that we live um, to celebrate the little stuff. Totally. Yep. I think you're a, a really remarkable human being to Thank be through you. what you're through and to still find a way to stick a smile on that face every Thank day. You. It's Thank great. You.